Hi, this is Johnny Chang from the World of Waterfalls, and in this video, we're going to talk about all the different ways that you can experience Yosemite Falls. It turns out that there are lots of ways to experience Yosemite Falls, which is the tallest major waterfall in California, and probably the tallest such waterfall in the USA. By the way, Yosemite Falls doesn't flow year-round, so if you want to see this waterfall booming, you'll want to time your visit for the peak of the snowmelt period, which is usually in May. But depending on the snowpack, it can peak as early as March, uh, during low snowpack years, or as late as late June in high snowpack years. That said, the falls typically does go dry by around August, though it can be earlier, again, depending on the snowpack. Now let's get into the ways to experience Yosemite Falls. We'll start off with the base of Yosemite Falls, which is the most obvious way to experience this waterfall. So it's not surprising that this is what the majority of visitors to Yosemite Valley would do. It basically starts right across from the Yosemite Lodge and it goes on a quarter mile walk right to the bottom of the lower Yosemite Falls. Now the path goes around a large clearing that used to be a parking lot uh, back when we first started visiting Yosemite regularly in the early 2000s. The atmospheric thing about this short walk is that you get to see both the upper and lower falls framed by trees lining the mostly paved path. It seems like every step you take on this atmospheric part of the approach compels you to want to stop and take pictures. The main lookout area is by a footbridge over Yosemite Creek with a full view of the 320 foot lower Yosemite Falls. In the morning, there is a rainbow at the foot of the falls. Now, most people turn around from this point and head back to the trailhead from here. But I found that you can finish the hike by doing a clockwise loop going across the footbridge and ending back at the Yosemite Lodge area. Along the way, you get unusual sights uh, like this huge boulder, the possibility of walking to the Yosemite Village and the Visitor Center, a clearing and lookout with an unusual view of Yosemite Falls, and wide open views of the falls from the nearby Yosemite Falls shuttle stop where you can also see Half Dome. While the atmospheric walk to the bottom of Yosemite Falls is a nice and leisurely stroll, the hike to the very top of Yosemite Falls is the complete opposite. This is really for people who want a bit of a challenge while also feeling the full 2,425 foot height of Yosemite Falls as you're going to ascend all of it and then some since the trail actually descends towards the brink of the falls at the end. If you're doing this hike, you're basically signing up to an over 7 mile round trip hike which is mostly exposed to the sun. So you'll definitely need lots of food, and especially water, a hat, and sunscreen are also good ideas. Of course, the pleasure part of the pain to do this hike involves nice sweeping views across the valley from Columbia Point after the first mile of the hike. Unusual views of the upper drop of Yosemite Falls where it's also possible to see Yosemite Falls together with Half Dome behind it. And of course, the mind-blowing, vertigo-inducing views from the very edge of Yosemite Falls. To take part in this adventure, you'll need to either walk the quarter mile west of Yosemite Lodge towards Camp 4, which is also called the Sunnyside Campground, but there's also a parking area across from that walk-in campground, uh, which has been used these days for the Horsetail Falls Firefall event. Of the various ways to witness Yosemite Falls from within the valley, the Swinging Bridge is one of my preferred spots, especially if you're here in the early morning. 
That's when Yosemite Falls gets its best light, which happens in the morning. And it's also when the Merced River is typically calm and it can provide some nice reflections of the Yosemite Falls. Contrary to its name, this bridge is actually a sturdy bridge that spans the Merced River, so it provides convenient access to get to the opposite side of the valley. There's even a little spot of the Merced River where the kids can play in the water on the north side of the river. The nearest parking area is the Swinging Bridge picnic area about three and a half miles east of the Bridalville Fall parking area along the Southside Drive. Now, of course, uh, you can also walk to the Swinging Bridge from other parking spots if the Swinging Bridge lot and the nearby four mile trail lot are full or not unavailable. If you're looking for something a bit more chill compared to the very busy walk to the bottom of Yosemite Falls or the intensity of the hike to the top of Yosemite Falls, then you can experience this waterfall from one of the wide open meadows. The nice thing about experiencing Yosemite Falls in this way is that the views are very wide open and sweeping. So you can also look east towards Half Dome, maybe even notice the overlooked Lahamite Falls, look south towards Sentinel Rock and Sentinel Falls, and even check out the Merced River itself. Most of the meadows are crossed by boardwalks to protect the fragile meadows, uh, which can be wetlands uh, when there's a lot of melting snow in the spring and early summer. Um, or it can also be a large field of snow in the wintertime. The pullouts and parking areas for the meadows fronting Yosemite Falls pretty much surround the, these meadows themselves. They're located along the Southside Drive near the Yosemite Chapel, the Cook Meadow parking lot on the connecting road between the Southside and Northside Drives, the informal road shoulders along the Northside Drive, and the Yosemite Lodge, which has expanded the parking area to reach towards Camp 4 on the western side of the Yosemite Lodge complex. Of course, you can also find parking around Curry Village and then take the shuttle towards the Yosemite Lodge area and then head towards the meadows. Now for more of a top of the world kind of view of Yosemite Falls, you can hike to the top of Sentinel Dome. This dome offers a full view of Yosemite Falls, including its elusive middle cascades, which can be hard to see from most of the viewing spots of Yosemite Falls elsewhere. You can also get an unusual view of Half Dome and the elusive Piliac Cascade in the distance. This spot used to be famous for a lone Jeffrey pine tree standing at the very top of the dome, which provided frame landscape views of the Clark Range to the south. But it was hit by lightning in the 80s and eventually toppled over after some storms that blew by in the year 2004. It's only about a mile hike in each direction from the Sentinel Dome Trailhead, which leaves from the Glacier Point Road, but you can also access Sentinel Dome from the Glacier Point itself. Taft Point gives you perhaps the most unusual view of Yosemite Falls since not many people go out to this vantage point to see the waterfall from here. Really, Yosemite Falls was more of an excuse to experience uh, some of Taft Point's butterflies in the stomach views and this includes things like El Capitan's nose, the wedge boulders of the Taft Point fissures, and the profile of vertical cliffs. By the way, Taft Point is kind of a microcosm of some of the famous Instagram bucket list sites in Norway, which in my mind is Yosemite on steroids. And so this includes things like the Wedge Boulders, um, which is essentially a smaller version of Sherag Bolton, and the Vertical Cliffs, which were eerily reminiscent of the Prekestuen. Like with Sentinel Dome, you can access Taft Point from the Sentinel Dome Trailhead and then hike a little over a mile to the west. 
or you can combine both Sentinel Dome and Taft Point and do the so-called Pahono Loop Trail, which also includes Roosevelt Point, where you get this really vertigo-inducing view down at the Sentinel Falls. Now, Sentinel Dome and Taft Point, as well as Glacier Point, assume that the Glacier Point Road is open, which may not be the case due to snow or road maintenance. So one way to still get up to the rim of the south side of Yosemite Valley is to take the four mile trail up. Now this trail is actually more like 4.8 miles in each direction or nearly 10 miles round trip if you were to go out and back. The nice thing about this hike is that it's pretty much directly across the valley from Yosemite Falls. So you really get to see the big waterfall from various angles. As the trail rises and Yosemite Falls becomes more at eye level with you, the trail also hugs cliff ledges, so there's some mild drop-off hazards uh, along the way. It's perhaps one of the more atmospheric ways to experience Yosemite Falls, especially since this hike culminates with a mind-blowing view of Yosemite Valley and Yosemite Falls from Glacier Point at the end of the Glacier Point Road. By the way, these drop-offs and cliff ledges are the very reason why they often close the trail if there's snow and ice that may be major hazards uh, under such conditions. Anyways, given the length of this trail, I'd recommend starting from within the valley so you can look forward to the all downhill walk on the way back. Uh, some people have come down this trail from Glacier Point but the problem with that is that you'll have to get back all that elevation loss, which makes it a bit of a very strenuous, long, upside down hike where you save the hardest part for last when you're already tired from the long walk down. Uh, that said, you don't have to do the entire trail to already witness the nicest views of Yosemite Falls. And, you know, if, the, if you feel the trail's getting long, you can easily head back um, whenever you want to. Last but not least, there's the Panorama Trail, which is an eight and a half mile one-way hike that starts from Glacier Point and descends into Yosemite Valley by the Happy Isles Nature Center near Curry Village. As far as experiencing Yosemite Falls, you already get great views of the falls from Glacier Point, which also includes a very in-your-face view of Half Dome. But another nice thing about this hike is that it also gives you the closest view you can get of Illilouette Fall, as well as the option of experiencing either the Mist Trail or the John Muir Trail on the way down. And both of those trails uh, takes in views of the massive Vernal Fall and Nevada Fall, which together uh, can be referred to as the Giant Stairway where each of these big waterfalls make up each step of that stairway. You also get pretty unusual views of Yosemite Falls in the distance, which keeps the scenery coming uh, when you hit the lone climbing stretch of the Panorama Trail after crossing Illilouette Creek. Now, one-way shuttle hikes can be a bit challenging to arrange logistically because you'll need to have two cars uh, parked at either end of this trail. But there's also a paid hiker's bus that can drop you off at Glacier Point at the start. Uh, now, if you're really fit and prepared, you can also do an all-day hike that starts at the four-mile trail, climbs up to Glacier Point, and then goes back down into the valley through this panorama trail. And when taken all together, this becomes a nearly 14 mile trek. That said, you can also break up this trail and do Glacier Point down to Illilouette Fall and back for a much shorter excursion. You can also experience the Mist Trail and John Muir Trail as a more manageable loop hike as either a nearly three mile loop just to the top of Vernal Fall or a more challenging 6.6 .6 mile loop to the top of Nevada Fall. Now for both of these options, I'd highly recommend going up the Mist Trail and down the more gentle but longer John Muir Trail to make it a little easier on your knees. 
So there you have it. These are the seven best ways to experience Yosemite Falls that you can do without needing specialized equipment. And as you can see, by doing these trails, I've become intimately familiar with Yosemite National Park. And in fact, you might even be your own expert of the park after doing these hikes as I've done, since it pretty much encompasses the best attractions within Yosemite Valley and beyond. If you want more details about each of these ways of experiencing Yosemite Falls, I provided the full blog post for Yosemite Falls in the video description below. I've also included links to other waterfalls that have been mentioned in this video as well. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Finally, if you've got comments or questions, please leave them below and let us know what's on your mind. Thanks for watching. Remember to have fun, be safe, be responsible, and keep on chasing waterfalls.